in the days, most of the time, you would wait for someone to make the first move. It might be on the first date, it might be the third date, whatever. It right. could be the man, it could be the woman. But now, all my friends have noticed that the man has stopped making the first move. All my girlfriends are like, they're waiting, it's the third date, fourth date, a week later, he hasn't gone in for the kiss, he doesn't do any touching or anything, and I've asked my dude friends that are single, right. and they are like, you don't know where a woman's gonna go with that story, and where I ain't touching nobody. And it kinda, it sucks, because, the Me Too movement is so strong and so so powerful for the people that need it, but it shouldn't ruin the maturity that we should have within intimacy and relationships. There should be very strong sentencing for women that make false allegations, who false accuse because men's lives are being ruined. So I think what should happen is that if you accuse somebody of rape, whatever sentence that rape would hold, you should have to serve. If there is clear-cut proof that you made it up, you should have to serve that sentence. And what I will say is I do know a girl who falsely accused a guy of rape, and she did it because she wanted to get back with her ex, and she thought it was a good storyline. And it was absolutely disgusting. And I am no longer friends with that girl to this day. And I, you know what? I was so young then, but I should have had the courage to call the police and have told them that, hey, I do think that she's lying. I can't say for certain that she was lying, but it was a little suspect. Uh, to me, and I do believe that she did it to get back with her ex, and it worked. Well, isn't this a delightful consequence of the Me Too movement? Men everywhere are now tiptoeing around, afraid to even breathe in the direction of a woman lest they be branded as harassers or worse. The dating scene has turned into a minefield for them. One wrong move, one innocent comment, and boom, their reputation goes up in smoke. Who knew expressing interest in someone could be so risky? Thanks a bunch, Me Too, for adding yet another layer of complexity to the dating game. Now, men not only have to worry about impressing women, but also about dodging potential accusations and misunderstandings. What a thrill. But let's ponder this. Is it really worth the hassle of pursuing relationships with women? Is it worth risking legal entanglements? Many young men these days seem to think not, and it shows in the declining rates of dating and marriage. Looks like men have thrown in the towel when it comes to dating. Can you blame them? Why bother when all they seem to get from women is disrespect and disappointment? It's like playing a rigged game where the odds are stacked against you, and the prize at the end is emotional turmoil, financial ruin, or even losing custody of your kids. Thanks a million women for making it all so charming. I have a team of people. Everybody who works for me right now are men. I've noticed if I hire someone and they're female, I have to be careful about how I talk to them, even give, giving criticism. And maybe it's me, but I feel like I have to be a little bit nicer, a little bit more gentler. Whereas with a dude, I can be like, can you just not do this again? And they're like, yeah, no problem, won't do it again. But if it's female, I'm like, okay, you did like this a little bit wrong. Here's how to do it a little bit better. Overall, you're doing a great job. Everything's fine. Please don't be upset. It's quite ironic, isn't it? Women, especially the younger ones, are famous for their pickiness and sky-high standards. Yet they act surprised when they find themselves in a pickle. In their prime, they set the bar impossibly high for potential partners. But now, as the dating landscape shifts, they cling to the belief that it'll still be smooth sailing. It's almost comical. Those who once turned up their noses at anyone who didn't meet their lofty expectations are now struggling to find someone who meets even their most basic criteria. Talk about denial thinking they can still call the shots when reality paints a different picture. Maybe it's high time for women to take a step back and reassess their approach to dating. Perhaps it's time to lower those unrealistic standards and get a grip on reality. Could we talk for a moment about Me Too? You've rejected the idea that we should always believe the victim in a, in a, in a rape Well, that's a obvious. That's yes. what happened in uh, the Lynch cases in the 1950s in the United States. The uh, victim uh, was always uh, believed. Yes, and I was going to say that's fair enough. But why not accept the situation as being the victim deserves to be treated as if she's telling the truth in our attempts to get at the truth? And in doing that, we do our best not to re-victimise her. Because that isn't how the adversarial system works, and I don't think but that we But why have not advocate for that? Because Rather the adversarial system is a very effective judicial system, and it's certainly the case that among crimes that are falsely reported, rape crimes are at the top of the list. So there is no believing the victim. There's no reason for people to assume that when they enter the criminal justice system that they're going to be treated with kid gloves or treated easily. That but, isn't how it works.
Did you know 60% of male managers say they are uncomfortable working alone with a woman out of fear of complaints of sexual harassment? Women in the workplace. Men, do not avoid working with women because you're afraid of sexual harassment complaints. That is gender discrimination. To avoid sexual harassment complaints, do not sexually harass people. Period. Now behold this sight of someone desperately trying to hold it together. This is the face of happiness when deception reigns supreme. Those bags under her eyes, they practically scream, I sob myself to sleep every night. She slammed into the wall so hard it's like she's playing life on the highest difficulty level and floundering hopelessly. She can try to deceive herself, but the wall sees all and knows all. It's almost laughable how she talks about some great guy magically appearing. Whoever ends up with this relic has our condolences. The irony is just too savory to overlook. These women, once dripping with confidence and selectiveness, now resort to online forums to mourn their dating woes. Oh, how the tides have turned. If I was a man, and I'm not a man, but if I was a man, I wouldn't hire a woman. I wouldn't do it. And I say it all the time, and I say that, and that is something that women need to consider when they're talking about this stuff. When you are saying that a man complimenting you and saying, oh, I really, I, oh, I really like your outfit today, um, is a form of sexism. What is the, if you're a man, why hire a woman, right? So you no, fought no. all this time to be able to get into the workforce only to say these are going to be the rules. You know, if you say anything, even if you compliment me, if you, if you look at me, anything, I'm going to have a reason to fight you. And by the way, you're going to want to settle and pay me because even just the stain of an accusation is enough to ruin men. So what wow. is, what, if you're, if you're a guy, right, in this society, in this Me Too environment, in this, in this uh, litigation rich environment of misogyny and sexism and all of these claims, what is the value add? What's the the risk? You know, the the benefit and the risk. I just I can't do the analysis and say I'd just be like, no, I'm sorry, everyone. Give me all the men. There's been a lot of conversations about why single women who are childless are the happiest women on the planet, and I'll give you a few reasons why. I'm single, childless, 39, and I live in Brooklyn. I am not responsible for the emotional labor of a man child. I don't have to clean up after someone else because they'll get to it later. I'm not showing up for somebody who's barely making an effort and then throwing a tantrum when I ask for the bare minimum. I make my own money and I get whatever I need and want for myself whenever I want to. I have an amazing apartment. I'm an aunt to five amazing children, which is arguably better than actually having them because I get to give them back. And I refuse to ever believe when women would tell me I was too picky, <laughs> even though their husbands have like gambling and porn addictions. I. So ultimately, if a great guy comes around who's willing to be an equal partner, awesome. I'm totally down for that. Otherwise, I'm good. It's truly a spectacle, witnessing these once proud individuals wail and moan about life's injustices. They seem incapable of realizing that their own sky-high expectations and behavior might be the reason for their dating misfortunes. Instead of facing reality and owning their part in their predicament, they blame everyone else. It's always someone else's fault for not measuring up, for not meeting their impossible standards. But hey, at least they have their online echo chambers to wallow in. Perhaps it's easier to drown in self-pity than to admit that their entitlement and fantasies of grandeur have led them astray. So let them cry and scream to their heart's content. The rest of us will be out here in the real world, having a good chuckle at their expense. Most of the time I love being single. I am very comfortable being single, but tonight I hung out with friends and I had a great time. And then I was driving home and I started feeling this like wave of depression and anxiety. And I, I wasn't really sure what it was related to or where it was stemming from. And then I, I got home and I felt like just so sad and lonely. And I walked into my empty apartment and I thought, God, I wish that I had someone who could just hold me right now. Like I wish that I had someone who could just take care of me because I have to take care of myself every single day and it's fucking exhausting and I just want 
someone to take care of me every now and then. A meeting with a group of guys several years ago about never being alone with another another woman. And this one guy said, "Hey, bro, in my job, and I know a lot of you guys are thinking the same thing. Hey, bro, in my job, I have to be alone with women." I'm like, "No, bro, you don't." This guy, six months later, confessed to having an affair with this woman. The entire time, he was telling us he had no choice. And that's it for today on Sigma Traits. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that notification bell. Support this channel through membership. You can also support through PayPal link in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you all tomorrow.